Okay, so basically, there are no reviews of the video game Dying Light available yet. So that has forced me to make my own review of the game. Now, the first thing I'd like to say is that I'm really upset that Xbox One and PlayStation 4 don't have a video editing system that allows me to not only make a video and upload it to my YouTube, but to allow me to do voiceovers directly into the video and then upload it to my YouTube. Now, I could be wrong. There may be a new app available on Xbox One that would allow me to speak while I'm playing and then upload that video to YouTube with my voice added to it. So if I am wrong, hopefully somebody can tell me what app that is because I'll download it immediately. So the question is, should you buy Dying Light? Now, there have been a lot of zombie games put on the market for people to buy. Um, Dead Island, Dead Rising, Dead This, Dead That, Resident Evil, etc., etc. So what type of game is Dying Light? Well, first of all, it's an open world game. If you've played Far Cry 4 or you played Fallout 3, then you know that open world games are basically vast stretches of land that are occupied, in this case, by zombies and other types of monsters. Now, in order to give you some variety of gameplay, the zombies come out during the day, but during the nighttime, even more violent animals and monsters come out to kill you. So... Obviously, the smart thing to do is to um, level up your character as much as possible and to get the best weapons that you can possibly get as soon as possible. Now, what this game is very, very similar to, let's say, a cross between Far Cry 4 and, um, let's say, the last Dead Island you may have played. A lot of you who've played the Dead Island series are not happy with the Dead Island series because the sequel was basically... Um, how should I say, it was an expansion pack that you were forced to pay full price for. Now, this game, as you can see, this game has violence and gore and blood and this, that, and other, because basically you're beating the shit out of zombies, tearing their heads off, tearing their bodies apart, etc., etc. But um, what I was going to say was this game also gives you the ability to actually play as a zombie and walk around infecting living things. However, what they had tried to do is they had tried to milk you by making the ability to play as a zombie uh, downloadable content. Unfortunately, because they pretty much fucked up the European and the American release, that downloadable content was not available when they wanted it to be. I'll just leave it at that. So basically, you have the ability to play as a human who's trying to survive the hordes of zombies. While you're doing that, like any other one of these open world games, you're being sent on missions to look for, you know, people, look for targets to assassinate. You're sent to reactivate generators. You're sent to turn on electric switches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what helps break the monotony up is that this game has a four-player co-op where you can, you know, get in and you can get out, drop in, drop out with other players. Now, that's a good thing for you. Um, it helps to break the monotony and it helps to, you know, if you have friends who have the same technology, like if they have a PC, PS4, or Xbox One, it allows you to play with them. Now, that's, that's a very good thing because um, it, it puts it more replay value into the game. The graphics, as you might expect, are excellent. Nobody really talks about graphics in these games anymore because for the most part, all the games really look alike. When you really take a good look at this game, you really don't see much difference between this game and newer games like Battlefield 4 or Far Cry 4. All of the textures are pretty much the same. Now, if you have a computer, now my computer is a um, Hewlett Packard HP Envy. And uh, I think I'd done a review on it before, but I have a quad core i7 processor and I have a GTX video card from EVGA that has four gigabytes of video memory. And on top of that, I have 32 gigabytes of uh, HyperX RAM installed. So, you know, it's a little less than $2,000. Fortunately for the console gamer, this game is also available um, for um, the PS4 and the Xbox One, and uh, you can get it on the console for $60, or you could buy it on the PC for slightly less. 
Graphics is something that they don't really talk about because the textures are pretty much, you've seen the textures before. Um, ever since, you know, Crisis uh, 3, Crisis 2, and Far Cry 4, I've pretty much seen the extent that these systems had to offer. Battlefield 4 shows you pretty much the extent of the graphic textures on the Xbox One and the PS4. Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare also shows you the extent of the textures on the consoles. So, open world games have their pluses and their minuses. For one thing, you know, the, the freedom allows you to accomplish most of your tasks in different ways. You don't, you're not forced to go along a linear path. You can do pretty much whatever you want in order to get to where you want to go. That's a really good thing because that, again, helps break up the monotony. Now... My only problem with open world games is the single player experience. Granted, it, it feels more like an RPG, a role playing game, but the single player experience doesn't require as much thinking for the developer because all they have to do is set the attributes of the player. And then what they do is they just, you know, start dragging and dropping things into the world that they're creating. And um, if anything doesn't work well together, all they do is they either add or delete components of the game. So it's it's kind of a cheap, quick way of making a game to make a game open world. It means that you no longer really have to do level design. In the old days, games were all about level design, and they were about finding new secrets. This game does offer plenty of secrets to find. Like, for instance... You can craft weapons just like you could in the uh, Dead Rising games um, and the Dead Island games. If you find parts of equipment, you can craft new weapons, um, which is a good thing. Um, the only thing about it is it's easy to breeze right through this game and miss a lot of the... Uh, it's easy to miss a lot of the uh, features in the game because as you play through the game... Um, it's possible that you can miss certain features because you just didn't look around as much as you could have looked so, around. So, the question again is, should you buy it? Well, if you don't have anything to play and you're looking for a really good game that has a great single player that you can also play multiplayer with other people and you want to, you know, experience the game with, you know, the co-op three other people to play with you, I definitely suggest that you do buy the game. This game will easily get an A score, easily. Most open world games easily get those scores as long as they have decent enough stories and as long as they have uh, decent enough, um, you know, story arcs and whatnot. Most games easily get at least a B rating or above. Stellar games get better than that. These zombie games pretty much fulfill your bloodlust while not taking things too far and not being very um, controversial. Nobody gets upset when you're killing zombies. The only thing they get upset about is games like Hatred, which is coming soon, where you're walking around killing innocent people that you know people feel don't deserve it. My argument is these zombie games aren't realistic because in real life, you know, people actually end up fighting over resources and they're not fighting zombies, they're fighting other people. You know, the zombie games, to me, in my opinion, are basically allegories to what would happen if society ever broke down and there was no government to protect us. When you look in a lot of these third world shitholes all around the world, what you see is weak governments that can't protect their people. And basically, when you play these zombie games or look at zombie movies, what you see is a lack of government, a lack of central planning. You see a lack of police enforcement. And people are basically turned into animals where they have to fend for themselves, fight for resources, kill each other in order to get resources. Basically, it, it's the apocalypse. Not necessarily a zombie apocalypse, but it's an apocalypse. It's, um, you know, the apocalypse is happening right now. If you take a look at the news from Nigeria, we got people being burned alive by Boko Haram. Or if you take a look at the Ukraine, where you got people getting their heads blown off. people fighting all over the planet right now. The apocalypse is here. It's just not in your backyard. So the zombie games give you a good look as to what an apocalypse is going to look like. But um, as far as gaming goes, they're pretty good time sinks if you just need something to play. But me personally, I'm waiting for Mortal Kombat X. And um, I won't be happy until that game comes out. Thanks for watching.